first and foremost, I'm called to be a Christian. Um, there's so many things that try to get your attention in this world, and truthfully, the most important thing is that we're called to live for Christ. I think that's that's a part of this whole mystery of calling, is that it just doesn't always make sense. I think sometimes there are callings for different seasons or different assignments that we might have, and um, so I think all of those work together. There's definitely your call to faith, your call to be a Christian, um, and then there's your vocational calling, kind of where you're supposed to go, what you're supposed to do um, in your life here on earth. There's something beyond yourself that pushes you to do something, say something, go somewhere, be with someone, be someone yourself. It's similar to, I guess what I would call like a flow experience, where you're kind of put in this state where time just seems to pass. Like you still have to try, you have to put effort in, but things just start to click and slowly fall into place. As Christians, God has called us to care for souls, and I think that this is something that we can do wherever God has placed us. We are called to serve God um, in, in every single aspect of our lives, um, not just in our family, not just in our job, not just at church. Calling is less about the specific job titles I'm going to have or the degree that I'm going to obtain, and more about how am I using whatever I get and the skill sets that I've been given uh, to serve God. We're called to uh, use our wisdom and use our discernment to uh, seek God in whatever we do. And faith says that I don't have to um, necessarily know what that is, but that if I trust in God, then I can have faith um, to pursue something, even if it's uh, foggy. I think asking the question why is central to figuring out what you're called to do and who you're called to be. You have to be able and willing to give up your small ambitions. And I think I began to realize my ambitions were small. I had shrunk uh, my aspirations into this puny little thing that would fit into uh, pretty much the world's box. Yeah, I don't really know exactly how it's gonna play out for me. I know for me, my calling is something that I'm still figuring out in a lot of ways, um, but I know that I have to go back to what scripture says and that we're called to be salt and light. That's kind of my motivating phrase, the phrase that lives with me, my motto is salt and light. How can I be something that adds and enriches to the flavor of this world as God intended it? And then where can I identify that there's darkness that needs light? I'll tell you one thing I've, I've observed over the years is there's not one experience I had, whether it's in broadcasting, in writing copy for newscasts and doing production work, whether it's playing in a rock and roll band, playing drums and, and uh, kind of doing, doing that whole thing. And then uh, traveling and speaking with the band. And then of course, being these band. there's not one single part of that that God has wasted. He's used all those little, all those little elements of my life, almost like a mosaic. And I didn't see it coming. And, and, and maybe somebody's watching this, you, you know, you don't see it now. You just kind of have these little dissimilar mosaic pieces. But what I've discovered is that God's will often becomes clearer in the rear view mirror than it is in the windshield, that you see it better in retrospect. And that's why it's a calling. You, you, you walk by faith and not by sight. And um, God wastes none of it not even the hard stuff, not even the bad stuff we've experienced. He can weave all that together into this, uh, into this tapestry of grace.